So as a follow-up to the SPR series I did with Alex from Ridgeline and Jared from Reston Group, one of the questions I got a lot was, what gear did you run during the class and why did you run that specific gear? So I wanted to give a breakdown of what I ran, but also what I've changed since then and kind of things I'm looking for towards the future. So to start off with, I know the thing everybody wants to know is what rifle did you run? And of course, I ran the Noveski 12.5. Now, before everyone starts getting mad, starts saying Jimmy's perpetuating this 12.5 master race and this and that, and that you can't do that with that gun. Well, I am to a degree, but I'm also not. And, and let me explain. So when I signed up for Shooter Symposium, I was a bit of a late registration. I wasn't sure what classes I could get into. So I had to take a setup that I felt like I could use in whatever class I was able to get into. And for me, that was my 12.5, simply because I shoot this gun more than others, and it's the one that I have the most time behind currently, and I know what it's capable of. I know my holds, I know my, my data on it to a degree, so I just felt most confident going into whatever class it was in with this particular rifle, so that's why I took the 12.5. Now, I did apologize to Alex, because he did his whole SPR breakdown. I was kind of running the anti-SPR SPR, because I have all the things he tells you not to have. I have a short barrel, I had an Atlas bipod, I have the high-rise mount, I have the flexi brace versus having an actual stock. So everything that they tell you you shouldn't have for an SPR class, I had. But the thing that I've come to find about this particular gun and Noveski barrels in general is they the rounds come out a little hot. So when we did that whole barrel test, you can watch that video up here, you can see the velocities in there and, and people were surprised by the velocity we got out of these barrels. And that has to do with the rifling, it has to do with their, uh, their chamber and a few other things. Uh, I talked at length with Scott about this recently, but I have also talked with him and Dave about this in the past. So if you wanna know more about that, you can either go watch the barrel video or you can also watch the review on this particular gun. Now, I did run that, uh, the 12.5 out there, we shot out to 600 yards, I had no issues with it. Uh, my accuracy was, I would argue to say, better than anybody else there. Um, again, I attribute a lot of that to the equipment, uh, but that this is what I did run out there and it ran flawlessly, no issues, no accuracy issues, um, no velocity issues. So it was, it was just good all the way across the board. Now, what I've changed since then is at the time it was a carbine length uh, barrel. And if you did watch the review on this gun, I did say the only change I would make is I would swap it to a mid-length. So Noveski have recently released some of their 12.5 mid uh, Leonidas barrels. And so far I've only run it once and I just did a quick zero on it. Also just getting some data out to uh, 750 yards just to make sure my dope was where it was supposed to be. And so everything was good. Everything's good so far. Out of the box ran great. Uh, we'll do long-term feedback on that later. Moving on from there, uh, the optic I ran was the Attacker 1-8. to And this has kind of been my go-to LPVO for the time. Uh, I also run the Vortex 1-10 to on a different gun. And I will be doing a video comparing those two. That's coming, I promise. I know you guys have been asking for that. I'll put that video out video out very soon. But uh, this is the gun that the optics been on here and because it's run so well, I haven't wanted to take it off and put out anything else. One issue I did run into with the attacker is that these uh, the caps would, would rotate off the screw in ones that come with it. So I got the, uh, the 100 concepts ones and I put these on after the class because I got annoyed by the other ones. And that was kind of like the last straw after sitting out there shooting all day and having to constantly mess them. So I got these, they've been great so far. So check them out, 100 concepts. Also have it obviously on the Unity mount. So running the Unity 2.05 mount with an offset T2. Now we did zero, we did confirm zero on both the optic and the, the T2 while we were out there. The issue with the tall mounts is that when you get into prone, it is, some people say it's uncomfortable. Now, depending on how your body type, body makeup, what you're wearing, all that will affect how you sit into the gun when you're in prone. So that that will be an issue. I will say when you're sitting in that position for a prolonged period of time, like 30 minutes to an hour or longer, yes, it, it does get uncomfortable. I did get some fatigue and had to get up and move around a bit because it was just, it was bugging me. The other issue you run into is because you are running a traditional heights uh, stock or brace or whatever, you don't get that good cheek weld. So for one shot, two shots, not a big deal, but when we got into the rapid fire, when we were doing three shot strings and trying to increase that cadence, at 500 yards or 600 yards, one of the issues I ran into is I would start to lose the reticle. So, and that was simply because as the gun was cycling and we were going so fast, I couldn't keep my head position in the correct spot, so I would lose the reticle one way or the other, left or right. So Alex said, hey, if you're gonna run this setup, throw a riser on there and that'll help with that to help keep your head in a more stable position. Now, I have put one on there since this is from a regular defense. Uh, you can check them out. They have some different heights. Uh, I threw one on there. So far, it's been great. I will say that one thing it does hinder slightly is that if you roll the gun over to your offset dot, 
it does feel a little more awkward, not as quite as natural. It's just something I gotta get used to, but it does help. And I do like that because it is designed because you're getting a cheek weld or it's pushing it up higher, it's a little bit thinner. So it doesn't feel like you're pushed away from the optic. You feel more in line with the optic. So uh, I do like that. So that's some of the changes that I've made so far. And that has helped quite a bit uh, being more stable on the gun from the prone. Now, aside from that, what this gun is set up for is more of like a general purpose, right? This isn't wasn't designed to be an SPR. It was just a, a general purpose rifle for me and, and what I wanted to do. And the reason that I run the 12.5 and the reason I run this setup, because uh, Bruiser will be the first to tell you, Bruiser and I argue about this all the time, about, you know, he loves to bust my balls because I'm running a 12.5 and it just doesn't get the velocity that a 14.5 or 16 inch gun will get. That is absolutely true. You can go watch that barrel video and see that and see what those velocity drops look like. And that velocity drop may only be 50 feet per second or whatever, but 50 feet per second at 700 yards, 800 yards is a big difference. So keep that in mind that yes, you can, I can get the job done with a 12.5, but is it the ideal tool for the job? Not necessarily. I can get the job done with a tall optic, but is it the best tool for the job? Not necessarily. But for me and for what I have this gun set up for, it is. And the reason I've been running this gun so much is because I don't like to run a lot of different guns or a lot of different setups. I, I typically like to pick one thing and I run that for a long time to see what the limitations of that setup are. It's the only way that I've found that you can truly see where the breaking point or the fall off point in performance is for certain things. So I've been running tall optics on all my guns because I need the time in to figure out where is the fall off point. And you know, being able to push a 12.5 out to 700 yards, 800 yards, I'm starting to find where that fall off point is. Like I can get the job done with this, but you don't know, you have to take your equipment and push it out and see really what it's capable of. Because if you just listen to the internet, the internet tells you, well, you can't do those things. Well, like what Alex told me when I apologized about the gear I ran, he was like, hey man, you're doing it. So like you're getting it done with that 12.5. And it was it was cool to see that. It was cool to, to push and see what this gun is truly capable of and to find out what those limits, but now it gives me more confidence in running this that I can run it anywhere from three yards out to 800 yards and be confident and know what I can do with that. So um, that is why I ran this particular uh, gun. But as I said before, it is not the best tool for the job, which is why I'm building that SPR back there. So we'll do a whole video on that build out once it's finished. Um, and you'll guys, you'll be able to see some of the changes I've made from doing something like this versus running that. Um, so if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen some of that process already, but uh, there's a few more things coming for that gun that we'll, we'll swap out. Now, when it goes to the other accessories that Alex talked about, um, I, I did run an Atlas bipod. Um, and the reason, a lot of you asked about the Magpul and Atlas and why he's not a fan of it versus the Harris. The Harris, he has said, is faster to deploy. So if you notice, he had that paracord on there and he talked about quick deployment. That is, that is specific to him. You know, some guys may vary, some guys may feel different about that um, based on their experience and the situations. But for him, that is why it it is his favorite compared to the Magpul or the, the Atlas. And the other thing is the Atlas does have the pan feature, which is super annoying at times because when you have it, when you have it extended and it rotates, so what would happen is if it's straight up and down, if we have a true, like no pan feature on there, the recoil is gonna go straight forward and back. The moment it starts to rotate on that pan feature, it's starting to throw the recoil of the gun off one way or another. And that can be super annoying. Some of you may like that. This is all, you know, shooter preference, but that is why Alex said, hey, go with the Harris versus this. Uh, the reason I have Atlases because I found them to be more durable. Uh, I know guys who have broken legs on Harris's, but if you try hard enough, you can break almost anything. So I do have a Harris on the way to throw on this gun just to give it a fair shot, a fair shake and see how it does. The other thing too is, is for guys who shoot PRS or who have different methods of approaching barricades. Some of them I've seen will like to take their bipods and angle them like this to help give stability when they're pushing off of a barricade or um, some sort of uh, adapted prone on, off of a boulder or whatever, a rooftop. So there's different different uh, tools for different jobs. You have to determine what is best for you, but uh, I did run the Atlas in that class, had no issues other than the pan feature wanting to you know do weird things. I wish there was a way to get rid of that, but. Uh, I've got the Harris on the way, going to give that a shot, see how it does. Uh, rear bag. So the bag that I ended up running the entire class was the Armageddon gear. This is their Schmedium um, Game Changer. This is Schmedium Game Changer. This is the wax uh, canvas and it has the medium fill. You can get the heavy fill, you can get a lighter fill, but um, everybody I've talked to either likes the medium fill, just your regular, or the heavy fill because they feel that it makes the gun more stable. Also, the uh, the wax canvas tends to grip the gun a little bit better too at the rear. Uh, the reason I like this is because it's a very versatile bag. I actually got this uh, initially from, I didn't get this, but 
Um, I was actually first recommended this by Bruiser from Bruiser Industries. And the reason I like it, I've come to, to really like this bag is because it is versatile for what I do. So I can stack it, use it as a rear bag this way if I need to. If I need a lower rear bag, I can use one of these. If I need to go really low, I can go right down the middle. Um, I can lay the rail of the gun in here. I can flip it over, put this on a barricade, set the gun on top and make it very stable. Just a lot of ways you can use it to get into unconventional positions or barricade work or, or whatever it is you're doing. So I know a lot of guys in competition run those. Um, sling, I think sling is probably the, the other thing that people asked about. Um, I typically almost always run centrifuge slings on all my guns. Now, one change I did make is that I moved, I used to always run my sling like here. I had a little offset, I ran it way back here. And that was more so just for reload so the sling wouldn't get in the way. After Alex's class, one of the things he talked about was putting the, the uh, attachment point for the sling further out on the rail. And that just gives stability so you can like swim through or when we're on a tripod or working barricades. So I grabbed a Ford Controls, just a little QD mount, threw it out there. So because this was cut to being back here, it doesn't quite fit as well. So now I'm trying, I'm going to try the uh, Stratus Armament. This is a new sling they have in development. And it's got this grippy texture on it so that the gun stays on you better. Um, so we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to fit this today and uh, we'll test it out at an upcoming match. A couple other small questions I know people had was, People asked if I was running a brake. Uh, I was running just a three-prong Surefire on there. I now have a dead air on there since I swapped out barrels. And then the trigger I was running is the Geisley SSAE. I just like two-stage triggers. It's the trigger I run in almost every gun. So the last thing I want to talk about is probably the most important one, and that is going to be ammo. When you're trying to get into long range to precision to SPR, DMR things, the ammo you use, I think, in my experience, is going to have the largest impact on you achieving your goals. Because we can get a really good barrel, like this Noveski. We can get a really good optic, like the Night Force. But if you have garbage ammo, once it leaves the barrel, you have no control over what that does, right? So it's gonna be thrown around by the wind. Also, when you get into 55 grain, into just full metal jacket, those loads are very inconsistent in terms of match grade ammo because you could have a 50 to, in some cases, like 100 foot per second variation or deviation from one shot to the next. And that is a large discrepancy in terms of uh, flight trajectory, but also in accuracy. So I would highly recommend that if you're going to get into this, take the time and spend the money on getting some decent match grade ammo. The reason I use IMI is because one, I know what it does out of this gun, but two, for the price, it's the best performing ammo that I can get for the price. I think this is like a dollar, a dollar oh five around. When you look at some of like the Hornady match grade stuff, you're looking at like a dollar thirty six, and then you only go up from there, up, upwards of like two dollars around. And if you're getting a hand loads, you know that's that's your own thing. But the what I found is that the deviation. Um, the spread of the velocity coming out of these rounds is pretty consistent from batch to batch. So I know what I'm gonna get out of this gun. I know it's very consistent, knowing what my bullet is gonna do at further distances and being able to develop a consistent dope off of that. So I use 77 grain IMI. There's a lot of great options out there. You're just gonna have to test and figure out what works best in your gun. Uh, but this will give you the opportunity to take advantage of having good glass and having a good barrel. When I when I first got there, when I showed up, I got to the class a little late. Um, I was like walking up in the last couple minutes right before we started. And so I have to get all my gear. Everybody's got their stuff all set up. They've got their spots claimed on the range. And, and I'm looking across and I see 16, 18 inch, 20 inch guns across the line with mid power optics. And I'm like, I am vastly outgunned. I, I even text Bruiser and, and some of my other buddies were in a group chat together. I was like, guys, I am outgunned at this class. And I'm feel like I'm about to embarrass myself. And everybody kind of looked at what I brought out when I took it out of my bag. They were like, he's running, you know, just that short little gun. But the big difference was I was one of the few guys running match grade ammo. And some of those guys running 18 inch barrels with four to 16 power optics were running just some 55 grain or 62 grain. Well, the ballistic coefficient of that round doesn't perform well, and it was super inconsistent for them as we got out past three, 400 yards, and they were really struggling with that. And I think a big part of that is the ammo. So um, it is something that you will learn more about as you get into these classes. Uh, but yeah, those are those are my recommendations. I would also say stay away from BD BDCs. Just don't do it. It was I, I don't care what the internet says. I don't care what the people in the comments say. Oh, well, my BDC is perfect. Unless you have the exact barrel, the exact optic, and the exact round that that, that BDC was designed for, it's not gonna perform the way it was designed to. So keep that in mind that when you get your BDC, yes, if you zero for the correct zero what it's designed for, you're still gonna have to go and confirm data because guys who had BDCs that had the right barrel length and had the right round, they would go out and instead of being on target at 300 yards, they'd have to hold shoulder or hold head in order for it to make that impact. So 
get out, test your gear, find out what works, what doesn't work. If there's something that I left out, something you wanna know more about, uh, make sure you leave it in the comments down below. Make sure that like and subscribe. Cry to chop the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and stick around as there's more content coming out on the, uh, the optic comparison, but also as we finish out that SPR build for a future Ridgeline class. Also, also, a lot of you have been asking me about the color of this in Goon Life Green, if it's gonna be available. Now, every time I talk to Noveski, they say enough people have to ask for it or want it for them to make it available. Now, I don't know that it'll be called Goon Life Green, they can call it something else, I don't care. But uh, if you guys want it, you have to go to Noveski's page and tell them that you want Goon Life Green available as an option. They're gonna hate me for this, but I love them.